Israel tonight will attempt to become just the fourth nation to reach the moon. The rocket's ready to go. The weather looks good. Our clear-cut anchor, Michelle McCrory, is reporting now from the command center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. We're in Cape Canaveral and anticipation is building for what is said to be a historic first for Israel and for the rest of the world. So what was the genesis of the Bereshit Moonlander and the Space Isle project? Well, according to one of the co-founders, it sounds like the beginning of a joke. Three engineers walk into a bar, come out with a design of a spaceship. Sounds like the beginning of a joke. But this is what happened about eight and a half years ago when uh, Kfir, we're sitting here, you're even myself, uh, sat down in a bar in a suburb of Tel Aviv and thought, why not get to the moon? If the touchdown is a success, it'll be the first time that a vehicle made with mostly private money has ever landed on the moon. Thanks to creative Israeli out-of-the-box thinking, it will also be the least expensive landing. Now, the main goal of this is to inspire national pride, to inspire young Israelis to pursue careers in science, technology, and engineering, and to show Israelis that they should and they can reach for the stars. This is something about the entire Jewish people. So we will land, the flag of Israel will land on the moon and, and be there permanently. But in addition to that, there is an inscription on our spacecraft called Amis Royal Chai. The Space IL team has really stressed that this is an unorthodox venture in many aspects, including how they're essentially hitching a ride on the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, ride sharing or Uber pooling it into space. And 32 minutes after the launch, the moon lander will be fully disengaged and will begin a seven week journey to the moon. Now, SpaceX has confirmed that the Falcon 9 has been fueled and they have practiced a countdown. The Bereshit moon lander has been mounted on SpaceX, along with the other payloads that are hitching a ride to space. Now, of course, weather is always a big factor in these things, but according to the Air Force Weather Squadron, there is an 80% chance of favorable weather conditions. So it looks like uh, things are a go, and we are set to witness history in the making. Michelle McCory, I-24 News, Cape Canaveral. With me now is Professor Oded Aronson with the Weizmann Institute of Science, who is also a mission scientist on this project. Sir, thanks for being with us. I want to ask you first, as a scientist, but also as an Israeli, walk me through what you're feeling now, just hours to go until the rocket launches. Sure. Well, first of all, it's a pleasure to be with you again. Um, yeah, of course, we're all very excited, very apprehensive, you know, uh, this is a this is a real first for a lot of us. I was actually I attended two launches in the past, and I was part of several projects with NASA, uh, both to the Moon and, and and to Mars and to Mercury. And I have to tell you, this one is somehow different. Uh, everybody has just this tremendous level of excitement uh, within the country, and also my colleagues and friends at Cape Canaveral right now. Everybody is just, you know, flying high. I know you're the mission scientist for Space IL. What exactly in a few hours will you be doing? Are you going to try and get a good night's sleep and wake up and hear the good news? Are you going to be on the phone with people in Florida? Are you watching on the we're Internet? What do you do? Have, I'm, we're going to have a live uh, connection, so we're going to get a lot of information live. Uh, personally, I'm going to be in uh, TV studios. I'm going to try to uh, share some of the excitement and explain some of the events that the spacecraft is going to do uh, on national television. I want to ask about the size of the spacecraft. This, when it lands on the moon, this will be the smallest craft to ever land on the lunar surface. It's a little bit bigger than a ton, five feet uh, tall, six feet wide. It's small. You had a little bit bigger than that, but this is, will be a historically small spacecraft. Why? I thought bigger is better. Why not get a giant no, no, thing on the moon? So smaller, when it comes to the space business, Smaller is better. Um, this spacecraft, as you said, weighs about uh, 500 kilograms, all fueled up. And the less it weighs, the easier it is to launch it from Earth and the easier it is to navigate it in space. So actually small, light, uh, capable, high-tech spacecrafts are the name of the game uh, in this new space business. I want to ask, can you hold up that model again? It's a nice little, yeah, sure, again, the, so sure. this is a time, what exactly is inside of this thing? I mean, obviously there's an Israeli flag that at some point is right. going to be put on the lunar surface. What else, right. what else is the thing carrying? Well, we got a few things. You can see here the solar panels. The spacecraft has solar powered. 
Um, we do have a battery that gets charged from these solar panels, but uh, we can only operate for a few hours based uh, on this battery. So we need these solar panels in order to survive. We have the main thruster and the legs, which are actually an Israeli invention, uh, which I we're all very proud of for the landing uh, gear. And then inside the spacecraft, we have electronics and a computer and fuel tanks. And actually, my my baby in the spacecraft is a is a science instrument. It's called a magnetometer. It's something that we added to the spacecraft in order to measure the magnetic field of the moon, which turns out to be quite an enigma. We don't understand how it is that the lunar rocks, the crustal rocks of the moon, which even the Apollo astronauts had already recognized are magnetic. We don't understand how these rocks became magnetic because uh, the moon doesn't have a global magnetic field the way the Earth does. So normal compasses don't work on the moon. We, they don't all point north. But yet the rocks themselves are magnetic. So we have this uh, puzzle that we're looking to solve using uh, the Space AI spacecraft. Yeah, I know it's you... not just about taking the picture and exciting youth, as you had said, but also about learning something new about the moon. Yeah, despite many uh, missions to the moon, both manned and unmanned, there's still a lot of mystery about about the, the rock orbiting the Earth. I want to ask, I mean, you obviously studied, uh, you actually, st my, my producer in my ear saying, just get to the aliens already. There's no aliens, Sean. But maybe I want to ask about just the mysteries of space. I mean, it's the, it, Israel's going to be the fourth country to go to the moon, but you're, there's so much we don't know. How important is it for Israel to make their mark in, in outer orbit? Well, I have to say, for me personally, and I think for the country wide, I think it's really important for us to get involved in the space game. Israel actually has quite a good footprint in uh, orbit around Earth, because uh, both for defense reasons and for communication reasons, uh, Israel has multiple satellites uh, in space. But um, the part that I think is most intellectually exciting is to be able to go and explore the planets, explore the moon, yeah. and take part in this, what's happening throughout the world now. Um, both by governmental organizations as well as by private organizations that you know, you know, like SpaceX and Elon Musk, about uh, humanity uh, expanding beyond the limits of Earth. Right. And I think it's really important that Israel uh, takes a leading role in this uh, in this uh, process. And the, and the mission begins in just hours.